हेलो एंड वेलकम टू द डेली क्रिकेट शो क्रिकेट हैपनिंग्स दिस ऑन अ सैटरडे डियर फ्रेंड्स एंड सब्सक्राइबर्स एंड ऑन दिस पर्टिकुलर क्रिकेट शो आई विल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट अ रियर गार्ड एक्शन व्हिच वाज स्टेज्ड बाय अ पेयर ऑफ जॉस बटलर हु हु गॉट अ 50 and also and both were unconquered at close of play and the very very surprising thing was that dom bess uh, who is the in fact today pakistan took a 169 runs lead over england uh, with the last wicket there of uh, going off the mohammad abbas but what was <laughs> very important was that england were at 110 for 6 they were trailing by 59 runs at that stage 169 was the lead Joe Root was the last man out, the six batsmen out, and it looked like England uh, probably uh, one would probably it was only a matter of 59 runs, and one thought that it would probably one would be seeing the Pakistani victory uh, coming uh, today itself. But uh, definitely one has to credit uh, Dom Best, the youngster, and he has been selected for his bowling. He's a right arm off spinner, and today he surprised everybody. by getting a maiden 50 able uh, when they staged the rear guard action in fact i would say they pulled the fat out of the fire here and not only that they have taken england uh, josh butler and dom best the youngster and a uh, young debutant uh, played very well to uh, take the score uh, to close of play without being separated at 235 for 6 so essentially it was a 125 runs partnership between both dom bess was not out on 55 josh butler had also reeled off in half century and definitely uh, this was a sort of a very very good display of batting uh, by josh butler and especially dom bess uh, the young debutant on his in his very first test match and that really says that this bloke has a lot of nerves uh, he came under a tremendous crisis there and he has come there and helped uh, josh butler to pull the fat out of the fire with england 256 uh, runs ahead at the current moment uh, when they go into the uh, fourth day tomorrow uh, in this first test match <laughs> so so that is something that i am going to look at and also uh, we are talking about a very the mark we event uh, which is going to take place tomorrow the d day approaches and it is the preview of the indian premier league 2018 finals which is going to be played between sunrisers hyderabad and chennai super kings and it should be a grand game of cricket according to me uh, well definitely chennai super kings holding the aces holding the wood over sunrisers hyderabad as they have beaten the sunrisers hyderabad Uh, in three meetings in IPL 2018, so I'll I'll come back to that later. So these are the two things that we are going to look at. So, but first, I'm going to start off with this wonderful match that happened on the third day uh, between England and Pakistan. Pakistan resuming on their overnight scores to stretch the lead to 169. They were all out for 363. Amir was not out on 24 with four boundaries. Mohammad Abbas was uh, wicket was scalped by. Mark Wood for five, and uh, it was 169 runs lead uh, to uh, to Pakistan over England. And uh, just talking about England now, England started their reply. Uh, it was Alistair Cook and Mark Stoneman, and it was Mohammad Abbas. And Mohammad Abbas, as I said, uh, he is like a Mohammad Asif type of bowler. Mohammad Asif, as you know, uh, to me uh, at that particular time when you're talking about Mohammad Asif, he was such a I thought after uh, the former Pakistani uh, bowler, great bowler Sirfraz Nawaz, who used to hunt with Imran Khan, uh, I think uh, Mohammad Asif was uh, the best thing to happen for Pakistan uh, because he is a man who actually moves the ball in the air. And and Pakistan, even though they have lost uh, Mohammad Asif uh, due to the uh, due to the controversy that happened, which kept Mohammad Asif, uh, Amir, and uh, Salman Butt out of the mix, uh, I think Mohammad Asif. Uh, was a great bowler was a very good bowler but unfortunately uh, because of that uh, very sad happening uh, he was uh, out of uh, cricket and uh, one has to say that mohammad abbas is someone who has really really shown 
that he is going to be another Muhammad Asif. He has replaced Muhammad Asif in the right manner and one has seen the way he is doing it. He is a, a certain type of bowler. He is a special type of bowler who actually swings the ball in the air, and especially in English conditions. I think Muhammad Abbas is going to be quite a handful for the Englishman. And that's what it precisely happened. Uh, with the very, with, with in the, uh, Mohamed Abbas was the one who nipped the wicket of, uh, of uh, Alistair Cook uh, pretty early on uh, with a wonderful nip backer. And Alistair Cook was into the pavilion, LBW Monmouth. They were 169 runs um, uh, behind and they lost uh, the captain, uh, lost Alistair Cook, LBW Bowl, Mohamed Abbas for one. Uh, Mark Stoneman uh, once again was kept quiet uh, with some very good balling from either end from Mohamed Amir and Mohamed Abbas but his wicket was claimed uh, by uh, uh, it was claimed by Shadab Khan I mean what, what a delivery from Shadab Khan uh, it was uh, Stoneman was uh, totally totally non plus there as uh, Mark Stoneman uh, was clean bowled by Shadab Khan uh, for nine uh, with one boundary and with both the openers gone the score read 31 for 2 and then we had two new batsmen at the crease, Joe Root and David Mallon. Uh, Joe Root, well, um, in his usual manner, uh, was trying to control the innings uh, by uh, really being a bit cautious uh, and also uh, hitting a few good uh, shots as well. But uh, David Mallon, uh, now this was the time where Mohamed Amir uh, got this England uh, batting uh, into a really, really tight situation. Uh, as uh, he picked up uh, two wickets uh, in, a, in one particular over uh, to really, really uh, give a big setback to the Englishman. As what he did is he first picked up the wicket of David Mallon uh, by angling a ball uh, into the body of David Mallon and uh, Mallon was gone, caught by Safraz Ahmed behind the wickets for 12 with one boundary. But uh, Jonathan Barristow, there was just one more ball that Jonathan Barristow blocked and in the very, des very next delivery, he was a goner. What a delivery from Mohamed Amir. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, take, a, take a bow, I would say, because uh, what a delivery. It was uh, pretty much uh, uh, angled um, uh, around the uh, body line. Uh, and that ball uh, actually, uh, I mean, it went through the bat and pad gap uh, of Jonathan Barstow just played at that time because he had his bat and pad uh, in a sort of a tangle. It was not, uh, uh, in, it was not in the right manner. And uh, well, it was. And Mohamed Amin had already beaten him, of, beaten him for pace, and it had gone on to shave the top of the off stamp. And Jonathan Barstow was walking after getting a knot, uh, and that was uh, that really, really. Uh, made the matters worse for England with a score of 91 for 4 but it was still not over now it was Shadab Khan actually uh, getting the wicket of Ben Stokes uh, forcing Ben Stokes to play an attacking stroke uh, which he did and the substitute Fakhar Zaman pulled off a brilliant catch of the bowling of Shadab Khan for 9 with 2 boundaries so that made it 104 for 5 but Joe Root and Butler and now the, the, the everything was resting on this particular pair as Joe Root was uh, at, uh, definitely coming to terms with it and uh, he was the one who was at the crease uh, well entrenched one could say um, briefly entrenched at that si at, at that time that point of time and uh, Josh Butler had joined him and one thought that uh, this is the pair which could uh, do something for him but uh, it was bad news for England uh, with only six runs added Mohamed the Bas what a delivery from Mohamed the Bas to me this was the ball of the day and this is what Mohamed the Bas can do he can move the ball in the air but this was a delivery which was pitched well outside the on stamp and it came a long way into Joe Root and Joe Root uh, was a goner as he was trapped in front of the stamps. He was gone LBW bowl mom with a bass for 68 with 8 boundaries which made the score 110 for 6 and now it was alarm bells ringing for England at that time with a score on 110 for 6. They had two new batsmen at the crease. One was Josh Butler who had just walked in and then the young debutant uh, who was coming um, ahead of uh, Stuart Broad uh, which was a bit surprising to me but nevertheless um, uh, probably uh, England knew that what uh, Dom Best was capable of as uh, this young debutant uh, I, I would one would probably think that you know with the, with the score on 110 for sex uh, one would have expected Stuart Broad to come especially since uh, Dom Best was actually making his uh, uh, making his test debut and he's an youngster as well 
Uh, but uh, surprise of surprises, Dom Best walked in ahead of Stuart Broad and uh, one was probably thinking uh, whether that was the right decision. But in the end, uh, what happened uh, was something uh, which even uh, Pakistan would have not thought about. Uh, and um, Dom Best walked in and uh, Joe Root and Dom, sorry, it was not Joe Root, uh, Josh Butler and Dom Best uh, bided their time at the crease. Uh, they decided to uh, at really consolidate the situation. They knew that they had a job on hand, 110 for six. I thought Butler nurtured uh, Dom Best very well, probably talking to him, uh, telling him that uh, it's, it's all about staying at the wicket. And Dom Best, I thought uh, he followed uh, Butler's instructions uh, very well. And uh, he started uh, blocking very well, started... Uh, he definitely had his uh, troubles against uh, the leggy Shanab Khan, uh, but somewhat he, he managed to um, get out of it. Um, Josh Butler was the at the other end, was also doing a good job, and both were slowly wearing off this um, uh, uh, this Pakistani bowling attack uh, on the third day. And suddenly uh, we saw that uh, this particular uh, uh, patience that uh, Josh Butler and Dom Best showed that really helped. As suddenly we saw a sort of a they started growing in confidence after that and as the ball became old more and more old we saw strokes coming out of the bat of Josh Butler and Dom Bess and Dom Bess was uh, particularly very very strong on the uh, offside he's uh, predominantly an offside player as it looked like because the the variety of strokes that he played uh, was uh, was uh, predominantly on the offside with only probably nine runs coming down the leg side as far as Josh Butler was concerned it was absolutely the reverse he was getting um, the, the Pakistani bowlers were actually angling the ball uh, at his uh, rib cage, one could say. But Josh Butler uh, was uh, really equal to the task and uh, getting runs on the own side as this partnership uh, kept on blossoming uh, to the utter frustration of the Pakistani uh, team as the score went on and on. And finally, uh, when stumps were drawn for the day, uh, um, one, one would see a pretty picture there for England at 110 for six. And look at the transformation. Uh, they closed at 235 for six on the third day. Josh Butler was not out on 66 with six boundaries, but it was all about Dom Best, the young debutant, coming in basically as a bowler and coming here in a very, very tough situation. That showed that this bloke has a lot of match temperament. Uh, he didn't show any signs of nerves. Um, he, he really weathered the bowling attack uh, in a very tough situation. Uh, in a very wonderful manner, uh, giving great company to Josh Butler as the partnership uh, added an unbroken 125 runs uh, for the for the seventh wicket, uh, which uh, really has uh, put England 56 runs ahead on the in the second innings. Uh, so Butler 66 not out. Dom Best uh, got his maiden 50 on his uh, uh, Test debut, and that is something he would be proud of. He would like to treasure this innings. He was not out on 55 with eight boundaries and Dom Bess, so oh, really one has to say, uh, it was a real surprise to see Dom Bess walk in at 110 for six uh, and help uh, help uh, Josh Butler and England pull the fat out of the fire. Now Bess not out 55 with eight boundaries, 235 for six was the uh, uh, stump score and looking at the bowling, Mohamed Ami, 17 overs, three minutes, 35 runs and two wickets with a double strike that he hit, which hit England hard. Mohamed Abbas uh, producing that uh, wonderful delivery uh, to get rid of Joe, uh, Joe Root. Uh, 15 overs, 3 minutes, 2 for 36. Um, and fine, Mushraf, 9 overs, 2 minutes, none for 31. Hassan Ali, 18 overs, 3 minutes, none for 57. Shadab Khan did his job well, 19 overs, 2 minutes, 2 for 63. And uh, so now one thing that I would like to say here, dear fans and subscribers, is that uh, there are two more hours before the second new ball can be claimed by uh, Pakistan. And uh, I think uh, it will be a sort of, a, uh, uh, I mean, if, if Dom Bess uh, can give company to Josh Butler and weather that second new ball, uh, that would be great. But uh, probably one has to see whether that can happen. If something they can do something out of the extraordinary tomorrow uh, as to what they did today, uh, I think England would be uh, indebted uh, to, uh, to Dom Bess uh, for, for such a batting display. Uh, but one has to wait and watch with the uh, with the second new ball due in just two hours, especially the morning, the due factor. And I'm also told uh, there are going to be cloudy conditions prevailing uh, tomorrow at the Lord's Cricket Ground. So definitely, uh, I think uh, the England uh, batsmen have their task cut out. Uh, but uh, what a recovery by England. 
uh, and take uh, Josh Butler and Don Bess. Uh, well, uh, from here, uh, we head on towards the IPL. As I said, tomorrow is the, uh, the we are coming to the, um, the finale as far as the Indian Premier League 2018 is concerned. And uh, I'm just going to do a very brief preview of the, uh, of the match which is coming up, the finals. Uh, Chennai Super Kings are into their uh, seventh finals here. They've won uh, two IPL titles. Sunrisers Hyderabad have also won a title, but they are also, uh, and, they are, they, and they are clashing uh, with uh, Chennai Super Kings. And this is going to be played at the neutral stadium, uh, which is uh, Wankade Stadium uh, in Mumbai. So definitely uh, one can't say uh, there could be any home support or anything of that sort. Uh, it's all going to be even, Stevens. But uh, I, one has to say uh, that um, right now uh, it is uh, Chennai Super Kings have beaten uh, Sunrisers Hyderabad uh, three times uh, in this uh, IPL 2018. So definitely, <coughs> sorry. So definitely they are holding the wood uh, over the Sunrisers Hyderabad. And also one more thing to be noted is that uh, the, the matches that uh, Sunrisers Hyderabad lost, one has to understand uh, that it was it, it was two the two matches were one of the match probably was a convincing victory uh, but uh, two were actually uh, a bit of a close affair as well so that is something that uh, would be there on the top of the mind uh, for Chennai Super Kings because they knew they know that uh, they probably uh, uh, the the law of averages would definitely uh, say that Chennai Super Kings uh, would be uh, taking their uh, third title uh, third Indian Premier League. Uh, uh, title tomorrow but uh, as I said uh, um, one can only go by the law of averages but uh, as I said the Sunrise and Hyderabad team uh, are a brilliant team according to me and uh, they, 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 are, they are capable of springing a lot of surprises so let's have a look at the Sunrise and Hyderabad team very quickly well the Sunrise and Hyderabad team uh, as I've always been saying uh, the Sunrise and Hyderabad the top three uh, are working well. Shikhar Dhawan and Kane Williamson have always been scoring runs, but that is where uh, probably against the Chennai Super Kings, uh, these two players uh, to me uh, have to really, really be there. Buckle down. They have to be. Uh, these both players have to score some runs. They have to score a lot of runs, according to me. Uh, and Ridhiman Saha would be opening with Shikhar Dhawan. So there's a sort of a, a change in the batting lineup. There's no uh, Goswami. Uh, coming in so that is a slight subtle change now the problem happens to be as I have said the Sunrise is Hyderabad tomorrow uh, one would like to see Shakib Al Hassan, Deepak Huda, Yusuf Patan has been doing his bit uh, and Carlos Brathwaite uh, for, uh, for, for, for some small measure but Shakib Al Hassan and Deepak Huda uh, to me uh, are really due for some runs and uh, there could not be uh, a better uh, platform than tomorrow uh, to really really show uh, that uh, they can make some big runs here. Uh, Rashid Khan has already shown his all-round ability. The other day he came and smashed uh, 34 unbeaten runs of 10 balls with two fours and four sixes and his bowling and also his brilliant feeling. So he is a sort of a multifaceted cricketer. Uh, the bowling will be in the hands of Bhuvaneshwar Kumar of late. He has gone up, got a bit of tap from the uh, batsman as well, Siddharth Kaul, uh, Sandeep Sharma or Basil Thampi. One would probably say that it would be Bhuvaneshwar Kumar, Siddharth Kaul and Sandeep Sharma. Uh, Chennai, and also let's, uh, let's also understand uh, that uh, the Mumbai, the Vankare Stadium pitch, uh, always there is some juice in the pitch. So basically uh, it's quite a possibility that it would go and help the, uh, pace, uh, the pace ballers a lot. So if you look at the Chennai Super Kings team, uh, Lungi Gedi uh, would be on in absolute focus. I mean, he has already done a great job. He's playing his uh, first IPL, uh, but uh, he has done a great job, according to me. So Lungi Gedi uh, will be going full throttle, uh, um, and he will be having Deepak Chahar, who can uh, really uh, make good use of the conditions in Mumbai, uh, where he could actually swing the ball well at some very decent pace, very good pace, one could say. And Shardul Thakur would compliment them admirably, and then the spin would be in the hands of Harbhajan Singh and also Ravindra Jadeja, uh, who, as, as, as things have proved, he started off in a, a sort of a very, very a shaky... Uh, I mean, I would say Ravindra Jadeja was not really making an impression, uh, but uh, in the latter stages uh, of the IPL, Ravindra Jadeja has made a big impression uh, with his bowling. Uh, 
Now, um, as far as the batting is concerned, uh, well, they have Shane Watson and Duplessis. Duplessis, as you know, uh, has already played a wonderful knock of 60 yard runs to take them to victory. Uh, Shane Watson uh, would be opening with Duplessis. It's a very good combination. Uh, Shireyash Raina has always been scoring very well in every IPL final. If you look at his record, uh, he has always been a contributor. So this could, could this could be no different for him. Ambati Raidu and uh, Ambati Raidu, well, he has been in some great nick in this IPL. He has shown uh, that he's a, he's a multi-dimensional player. Uh, which is great. And MS Dhoni, uh, well, this this gentleman, MS Dhoni, captaining the Chennai Super Kings, which is sort of uh, Dhoni synonymous with Chennai Super Kings. And uh, Dhoni has led his troops well. And look where what he has done. He has, with, with his support and with his team's support, uh, he has Chennai Super Kings into the third IPL final. And I'm sure Mahindra Singh Dhoni would like to have a, uh, have a hand at the cup stand with every uh, with the Chennai Super Kings team and hold the trophy aloft after uh, all those uh, all those goings on that happened with Chennai Super Kings where for two years uh, he had to be he had to lead the rising Pune Super Giants and here comes into the Chennai Super Kings and has got his team into the finals so but uh, I, I have to say that Chennai definitely hold the aces Chennai Super Kings uh, are the ones who have beaten Sunrisers had about three times. Two, there were two close affairs, so, so you never know. But uh, definitely, um, I think we should have a good battle. Sunrisers had about would be pretty aware about uh, what to expect from the Chennai Super Kings, and they would have done their homework. So I am expecting a sort of an even battle out there in the center. And uh, as I said, good luck to both the teams. May the best team win, and let there be entertainment galore at the Wankhede Stadium in Mumbai. Well, dear fans and subscribers, uh, that really, really uh, ends up this daily cricket show of mine. Uh, I'm signing off today uh, to promise you that on Sunday, uh, your host Ram will be back on this cricket broadcast uh, to tell you all about the IPL finals and also on the four days play uh, of the, uh, the first test match which is being played at the Lord's Cricket uh, Ground against England. Well, Pakistan and England. That's it from me, your host Ram, and it's your host Ram, finally signing off for the day. Thank you.